This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. See, we've been trained to only need God when we have a need. But I need Him in my life. <laughs> hey, glory to God. I need Him on my job. I need Him in my marriage, my relationship. I need Him with everything that I do. I don't ever want to be in a position where I don't need Him. That's humility. Change Experience 2023 is coming to your city. Join Creflo Dollar in Miami, May 19th, and in Charlotte, June 9th. Unite with the World Changers Nation and get Psalm 91 equipped live. Experience meaningful worship and the life-changing message of grace. This is a revival like none other. Seating is limited. Register now. Text CHANGE2023 to 51555, scan the QR code, or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let our sun shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, and we're going to begin 5 through 7. Uh, excited about this series because this is, um, this is a series where we're going to learn how to give way to God and what He wants to do in our lives, but also at the same time, how to block the ways of God and what He wants to do in our lives. We're going to talk about humility, and that's so very, very important. It's important that I can bring this down on a practical level, not just uh, you know, biblically knowing that the Scriptures are just filled with points on humility, I just am not sure that a lot of Christians are really carrying it out. Uh, I, I don't want it to become a buzzword, something that we hear about, we know about, but we fail to execute, partly because Maybe we just don't know it enough. Maybe we don't understand the practicality of it. But I do know that the grace of God will be released upon those who are humble. And I do understand that at the end of the day, the opposite of humility is going to be arrogance and pride. Now, nobody in here is going to jump up and declare, well, I'm arrogant. <laughs> but I tell you what, Hopefully, I can get you to see, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, man, that maybe there are lots of areas where you were arrogant and just didn't want to use that word. It, it, it's kind of harsh, arrogant, not arrogant. But we have to understand humility for your sake, for God's sake, and for the sake of other people that are in your life. And so today, I thought I would just deal with the definition. I call today's sermon Defining Humility. Defining Humility. Now, it has been said, and I have heard, that the difference between confidence and arrogance is humility. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, and if you look at this very carefully, it's going to give you a lot of little keys of this definition here. Verse 5, he says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Underline the word submit. Submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject, underline that word subject, 
all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. So he says, if you'll submit, if you'll be subject, then you'll be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Well, I don't know about you, but I want to I wanna be on the humble side because I, I want this infusion of grace in my life. But if I'm on the pride side, then he resists, he withstands pride. Well, Brother Dollar, I don't, I, I don't understand why, where was the favor of God when I needed it? Where was this? Da, 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 no. Well, 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 well maybe, maybe now we can kind of examine ourselves and, and ask ourselves, am I, am, am I prideful? Lord, reveal to me, this is a great prayer, Lord, reveal to me areas of pride in my life. There's no need to be walking around with something and, and, and just not be aware of it. Lord, reveal. Hey, let's go, let's pray a little prayer together. Let's, let's say to him, Lord, Lord reveal, to me reveal to me any area of pride that's in my life. Well, I believe God loves me enough to reveal to me those areas of pride in my life. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And then in verse 6, humble yourselves therefore. Since he gives grace to the humble, humble yourselves therefore under, see this is, this is the, the definition is all, all in these scriptures. Humble yourself therefore under being subject, submitting yourself to the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So God's got exhortation on his mind for you. And it may not happen when you want it to happen, but he is saying, and, and I heard this this morning, I promise you I heard this this morning when I was walking from the kitchen, God said, there's so much I want to do in the lives of my people, but they won't let me. I'm like, how is it they're not letting you? They won't humble themselves to what I want to do. They keep trying to get me to do what they want to do, and I got them here for a time, for, for a purpose in their lives, and there's going to be a set time, somebody shout set time, and a due season, somebody shout due season. Glory to God. And due season always comes, so it's no longer if it comes, but when. And he says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. It's not if you're going to be exalted, oh, glory, but when you are going to be exalted if you're not building a dam of pride. And you know, I didn't, I didn't cuss, a, a physical dam, you know, a dam, say, dang, the pastor just said dam, a dam of pride. You're not church for a while, dam. <laughs> Are you damming up something with prideful, arrogant ways? Think of this, God wants to exalt you. Will you let him? Mm. And then he goes on and he says, this is so cool. I, I love the way they wrote this because he's now giving you a very clear practical example. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares upon on you. He says, he, what, what's the subject here? The subject is, you know, uh, uh, humility. And, and, this, and, and, and if you'll humble yourself, he, he'll exalt you in due time. And, and, and all of these things he's saying here, submit, make yourself subject to, humble yourself. He gives grace to the humble, uh, but he resists the proud. And he says, okay, you want to really know if you're in humility or pride? He says, cast all your care upon him. If you cast your care upon him, you're in humility. But if you keep walking around with cares, listen to this, you're in pride. Because you're not submitting yourself to him. You're not making yourself subject to him. He wants to exalt you, but he's like, I can't do it because I'm trying to get you to submit to the way that I can do things in your life, but you won't do it. I say, cast your care upon me. 
you keep carrying your cares. Not only do you carry your cares, you get on the phone and you start telling everybody what you're carrying. And then you, and then you get it on your face. And then you, you, you weigh it. You wear it and, and, and it's weighted on you and, and you, you won't cast your care on him. And you, oh, y'all, y'all don't understand. I'm worried. Well, boy, baby, y'all not worried. Well, I, I worry. That's what I do. I worry. Okay, fine. I don't expect any grace to be given to you, so take a, take a pill or something, all right? And God is like, I want to do something about the situation, and I want to give you peace in the midst of the situation, but you won't, you won't do the simple thing. Cast all your care upon you. It's not your care. I've already signed for the package of all of your cares. I want your care. Can I have your care? And you know what we're literally saying? No! It's my care! Get your own care, God! <laughs> well, I mean, He made us. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. And so, it's kind of interesting how the world would say that the difference between confidence and arrogance is humility. That got my attention because confidence says, I have skills and I recognize them. I'm confident. I have skills and I recognize them. But arrogance says, I have skills and others must recognize them. Whew. So let's get kind of practical with this, if you don't mind. I mean, why does humility differentiate confidence and arrogance? Well, humility changes how we view ourselves. When we're humble, our goal is not to exalt ourselves. Hmm. Especially exalting ourselves over other people when we're humble. Humility, like I said just a few minutes ago, is beneficial for us, it's beneficial for God, God able to do the things that He wants to do in our lives, and it's beneficial for those who are around us. There is no verbatim definition like, like when you go to the, you know, the dictionary, you see a word and it gives a definition there. And so this is why I'm doing a series on this. I, I, I want you to catch the life of humility. There is no, you know, like, humility. Humility is defined as da 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 I've tried to do that, and, and, and I've come up short every time. And as soon as I say humility means that, I run into other scriptures, and it also means that. And I run to the other areas of the scripture, and it also means that. So we need to just, we need to bake a, we need to bake a cake here and put all the ingredients in there and ask God to help us in this journey of humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And the church here this morning said. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm glad you're listening. Now, let's look at a few examples. Go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 in the NLT. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 in NLT. And here it tells us how to practice humility. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, it tells us how to practice humility. Of course, that'll help us out here. And verse 3 says, all right, he's telling us how to practice it. Look what he says. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. That certainly answers the question of how do we practice humility. Don't be selfish. So what is he saying? When you're selfish, you're probably not practicing humility. Don't try to impress others. Sometimes we, sub, we, we subconsciously, just deep in there, we don't really mean to impress others, but we kind of we, we want to impress others. And I think there's, as a part of our, our journey, we've got to kind of get to the place where we're ready to be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we lie to ourselves, and we don't want to admit that we lie to ourselves. Some say, I ain't a liar. Well, you need to tell yourself that because you've been lying to yourself about a lot of stuff. <laughs> don't try to impress others. You value yourself enough. Don't try to impress others. 
Think of others as better than yourself. So if I were you, I would take this verse of Scripture, and I put this in my life notes, and I kind of say, Lord, help me to see this today. Am I selfish today? Was that a selfish act? Help me to point these things out. Because I, as I begin to learn how to practice humility, I'm also going to see favorable response come my way. Not that I'm earning it more than I might be blocking it. Be humble. Be humble by not being selfish. Be humble by not trying to impress others. Be humble uh, by, by, by not uh, think uh, the way that you're, you're treating other people. And, and, and I remember the first time I was, I, I was invited to this meeting and all of these big name people there, both preachers and politicians, they were just like, it was like, whoa, you know. And, and my first thought was, okay, how do I carry myself in the midst of this, Lord? And uh, he really spoke to me. One time he told me to learn the vocabulary of silence, because you got to be careful if your mouth is moving all the time, it may eventually say some things that, that, that are going to be prideful. But he just said, well, humble yourself. I'm like, I don't even know what that looks like. I mean, for a long time, people used to even say it different ways. Humble yourself, humble yourself. I, I, I don't even know what that looks like. I mean, I never could understand the humble part. And I, and I guess it's all right, I'm, whatever, but I'm just like, what does that look like? Just don't try to exalt yourself. Be cool. And I'm telling you, if I, if I were to tell you just that room and who was there, and so I humbled myself. And the first thing I did, as I went to the very back of the room, there were chairs there, there were limited chairs there, and I decided everybody, anybody who needs that chair can have that chair. I'm going to, I'll be, I'm, I'm going to stand up. And so I, I stood there, and after I finished, the guy who was hosting the meeting, who everybody in the world knows this guy, everybody, and his uh, assistant, came and got me, and he said, uh, Brother Don, could you come here? Such and so, such and so wants you to sit right by him. I'm like, he, he know me? <laughs> the first thing I thought about was, it was an act of humility that immediately resulted into exhortation. You don't walk up in the room demanding folks or somebody because you think you all that and, ain't, and you're not really all that. I want to go that route. I want to go the route of humility to be exalted versus trying to exalt myself. If you understand that, say amen. Now let's look at this one, Psalms 25 and 9 in the NLT. Psalms 25 and 9 in the NLT. So now here we're going to see how God blesses the humble. This is so cool, verse 9. He says, he leads the humble, I love this, this is a blessing. He leads the humble in doing right, teaching them his way. He will teach you his way. That's wisdom. I need to know God's way. You, the things that come up in life, that, that what could happen if you knew his way? How would he handle this? How would he approach this? How would he deal with this? And he says, for the humble man, I'll show you my way. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. But humility postures you. The humility posture puts you in a place where God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to teach you my way. Ooh, boy, the life of humility. Say out loud, I'm a humble person. Mm-hmm. Boy, you're getting ready to go somewhere. You're getting ready to be exalted. Ain't no telling what. I mean, just by the day, this coming into your system. And, and this is the reason why I, I love our church so much. At the beginning of every series, you're intense. I can't even get you to say yabba dabba do. You're like, all right, leave me alone, Rem. I'm, I'm, I'm working on something here. I'm thinking, I'm trying to locate myself in this sermon you preaching. 
ain't got time to be hollering at you now. You know, that's your own insecurities if you need somebody to holler at you. I mean, <laughs> hey, I get it, because you're hungry to understand what you need to do in order to start walking in God's best. All right, that's number three. Let's look at this, this, this third example. Number three shows us the posture and the position of humility. Matthew chapter 5, or, or, or verse 3 in the NLT. Matthew 5, verse 3 in the NLT. Oh, praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm getting kind of fired up here. I, it, it, it goes back to the quickest way to be on top is to start off on bottom. And that doesn't make sense to the world. I ain't starting off on bottom. And that's why you never get started on that. The only man that starts off at the top is a guy who's digging a hole. Some of y'all ain't gonna get that the next week, but you'll be all right. <laughs> I love it. Verse 3, God blesses those who are poor, and I'm thinking like, poor? No, he says God blesses those who are poor, and here's what he's talking about and realize their need for him. The King James says God blesses the poor in spirit. So he's talking about God blesses those who are poor in spirit and they realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So here's the posture of humility, realizing that you need him. And that by itself, that total dependence on God, this is where we're going again, that total dependence on God, realizing that you need him, will give birth to humility in your life. I tell you, when I wake up in the morning, I need him today. I need, when I go to bed at night, I need him. I need him. And when my head hits the pillow, it'll hit the pillow in peace and my, my sleep will be sweet. I need him. Hallelujah. And there's so many people, so many Christians even, that don't think they need God. Like, been there, done that, know how to do it. God's got a million ways to get you out of debt in one week. He may not do the same thing the same way every time. I need him. I don't want to marry methods. I don't want to marry methods. I don't want to get to the point where I marry methods and I, I, I cause that method to become traditional. I, I, I want to I walk with God on a day-to-day -day basis. And last week he told me to do it like this, but this week he told me to do something that I have never done before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I say, Lord, why we didn't do it like we did last week? He said, last week would have worked, but I want to show you the many wisdoms that I have. I want to show you the manifold wisdom that I have. Oh, glory to God. And he's showing me those manifold wisdom. Hallelujah. I don't know if you understand, but you are about to move to your next level. That's what it means to be exalted. And when you get there, you're not going to be to pat yourself on the back saying congratulations to you. You got to lift your hands up and give God the glory and the honor because you know it was nobody but Jesus that brought you out of the pit and planted your feet on a solid ground and put a new song in your heart. I realize I need him. I need, I need him every time I teach. I need him. I need him when I'm driving. We were on the way out, just going, just going, you know, around the corner. And Taffy said, "Hey, hey, let's let's pray, Father. Thank you that we're safe and no harm comes to us." I said, "Well, that's that's different. That's new." She said, "No, people are getting shot by going to the grocery store. We we're not going we're not going to walk in fear on that. We're just gonna we're just gonna admit, admit that we need Jesus to go to the grocery store with us now." See, before we didn't think we needed him so we wouldn't bother him. But right now, I need him when I go to the grocery store. I need him when I'm riding on the expressway. I need him, hallelujah. You remember that song, I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now. It's a blessing. We all know that humility is a godly character trait, but how do we keep a humble attitude in a world that exalts pride and arrogance? Creflo Dollar's series, The Path to Humility, defines humility and demonstrates how God's grace will teach us to walk in this godly trait. Let's declare total dependence upon God. Dependence upon God 
produces humility. Any goodness you've ever walked in, any goodness you've ever experienced, you ain't got no choice but to lift your hands up to heaven and to serve a God that still sits high and looks low. You better give him the glory. You better give him the praise. You better shout unto God. Available as four CDs for a love gift of 25 U.S. dollars or four DVDs for 35 U.S. dollars, this series can be yours today by calling the number on your screen, scanning the QR code, or or visiting CreflodollarMinistries.org and clicking eStore. Don't miss out. Calling all world changers and those who have been changed by the message of grace. It's homecoming time. We've been on the road spreading the gospel, and now it's time to bring it home. That's right. Grace Life 2023 homecoming is upon us and will be an experience like no other. God just showed up one day in his mercy and in his grace because he knew it concerns you. We have a better covenant with better promises. We are inviting the entire World Changers Nation home for a three-day weekend, July 13th through the 15th at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia. When we get a revelation of who's with us, we know that we are never alone because you know what? I know that the Lord has my back. Join us for life-changing revelation during this soul-stirring weekend filled with all the excitement of the Lord. This is a conference you don't want to miss. Welcome home, world changers. Creflo Dollar Global Missions has fed, clothed, housed, and shared the gospel of grace with people on practically every continent. I want to take a moment to encourage you to visit our website and catch up on all the missions work we're doing around the world. You may never visit these places or witness the poverty and levels of human suffering firsthand, but your support, prayers, and selfless giving equip us to go and to change lives for the better. Thank you for caring enough to proactively take steps to stop misfortune in the lives of others. And thank you. If you want to support our global missions outreach endeavors, consider becoming a partner today by calling in or by visiting us online and signing up. Thank you for partnering with us today. Look no further for encouragement to walk in the grace of God. The Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app provides rewarding content that is sure to nourish your mind and soul. Treat yourself to enriching messages from Pastor Dollar on grace and walking in the likeness of Christ. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app to stream messages of hope, grace, and understanding when you need them most.